The ammunition in area of effect changes hit a lot of weapons pretty hard, but none were hit as hard as the Kuvas are. Does that mean that the weapon is worthless now? Should we avoid it? Should we not use it? Well, not exactly. Another life support capsule is now available. Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be re-diving deeper into the Kuvazar. I'm going to have a new player introductory level setup, an end game setup as well. That said, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach. That's because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuvazar. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Zar, my friends, is a ship's cannon, plain and simple, but this one has two fire mounts. In primary fire mount, this one launches, well, a ship's cannonball, because it's a ship's cannon. Not important, what is important upon contact, this one will explode in a massive 7 meter range, but that's not all. As you can see, it also is going to be spawning some little bomblets that will be flying off from the point of contact, which is why it's very important to know how to aim the Zara. Aim at the enemy's feet. Try to get roughly a 30 degree angle so most of the bomblets get pushed kind of forward into your enemies and not all over the place. Yes, yes, fantastic. Now, the bomblets have... Yeah, you see what I mean? The bomblets have their own little explosion. Of course, they also have contact damage as well. So you have plenty of sources of potentially applying a proc to die targets. So something like that. The secondary fire mode. Nothing happens. You just hear a little cha-ching. You hear the ching and now it's in barrage form and in barrage form this one is a hit scan shotgun now of course you might be wondering hey man what's with the fireworks see that every time i fire my zar like so you get fireworks up in the air and that's because of the skin i'm using right now on this one if you're going to be taking off the skin you will not be getting any additional fireworks now the reload on the weapon is strun style so cannonball by cannonball by cannonball at times the weapon gets bugged out and the Hydra kind of holds it like this, or your Warframe kind of holds it like this in a semi-equipped position. If that happens, simply change to your secondary or your melee, or fall off a platform, or, you know, die, and you're gonna reset the weapon. So do bear that one in mind. That's pretty much it. Keep in mind that the secondary fire, the barrage, has a nasty spread, so this one is to be used up close and personal. Essentially, use your big old cannonball when you get deal with a group of enemies, yes? And when you deal with something like an Acolyte or something of the sort, ideally you switch the Barrage and pepper them in the face. Yes, and that's pretty much it for the functionality of the Zar. It has one major issue. Can you spot it? Can you see it? How about now? How about now? You see it now? Yeah, that's the issue. I am bone dry on ammo. How much ammo does this one have? Five reserve. Five. No, you see, this is the bug I was talking about. See? It's like, I'm not sure what to do now, mama. But if I change, there you go. Strun style of reload. And again, you get five in the magazine, five as a reserve, and this is all your ammo. You're going to be needing yourself some ammo mutation if you want to consistently use this weapon and not just like a burst and then switch to something else. But let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Obviously, the Kuva weapons will depend on your progenitor. I still recommend you go with a Toxin progenitor or a Cold progenitor depending on your build. You'll see exactly why that is later. And if you still don't know how to valence fusion weapons together, so you get the most you can out of your Kuva weapons and your tenant weapons as well, link in the cards right now for like a two-minute guide on that one. Mod capacity 76 out of 76. What the hell? No, normally you get 30 out of 30. As soon as you get the weapon, you go into actions, you double that mod capacity using your uh, Orkin Catalyst, and this is the valence fusion, by the way. However, this being a Kuva weapon, the more Forma you add, the more capacity you get. Two per each Forma, times two, because you get double from plugging in an Orokin Catalyst, and that's how you can get to 80 out of 80. If you want all the mastery out of this one, you're gonna have to Forma it five whole times. In terms of Forma, for a new player starting build, I would recommend you go with two Forma just to begin with, but again, you should get all the mastery points out of it. Accuracy is not important because this is either a shotgun with a horrible spread or a cannon that has travel time and drop off. Ammo maximum, as you saw, is absolutely horrible. Ammo pickup is also horrible. Fire rate is not bad considering the big bottom explosion. You get magazine of five, which is horrible. Noise alarming reload on 4.8 seconds. 
that's bloody terrible especially considering that you only have five ammo again it goes shot by shot so you can't just reload one and then blow up your remaining targets or something of the sort let's talk about critical chance critical damage keep in mind that this will apply depending on the fire mode that you are using you got 25 percent critical chance and 2.5x critical multiplier however if you scroll downwards on the barrage side of things, this one has 37% critical chance and 2.5x critical multi. Stats per projectile is very important to understand. As a base, you are firing 10 pellets in the barrage form. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, most players don't really care about the barrage and they just simply use it as an explosion, so bear that one in mind. As for your actual explosion, this is it, my friends. That massive range of 7 meters with a massive falloff of 70%. I guess we shouldn't be all that whiny about it because at the end of the day there are weapons out there that have 90 even 100 percent damage drop off though do keep in mind that full blast damage you're only going to be getting it at the epicenter of the explosion and as it fans out you're going to be getting less and less now let's have a quick look at a standard introductory level setup Damage, restoration, multi shot with split chamber, and vigilante armaments. You got yourself some critical chance and critical damage for this, so critical delay and vital sense. Of course, hunter munitions gotta be on this one. And we only got 160 60 mods, rhyme rounds, because with the base stocks and on the weapon, I'm gonna be making vital damage, which is what I need to make my slashes go big, boom, boom. Yes, fantastic, yes. Now, keep in mind, this only really applies if you went for a toxin progenitor. If you went for a cold progenitor, simply swap out rhyme rounds for the toxic version that you can farm from corrupted war in the void none of these mods are expensive if you're just starting warframe out kind of now and you got let's say carried through farming a kuvazar then congratulations this is a fantastic weapon if you can get past the ammo issues some of them will be fixed with rifle ammo mutation not completely you're not going to be able to like fully spam non-stop because you will run out of ammo firestorm is your option slot just like vigilante arrowments for the most 24 percent blast radius is not a whole lot but it does take your explosion from seven meters all the way to 8.7 there's also a prime variant that it gives you 44 percent for now let's go like so and i'm going to show you what it can do versus level 120 corrupted heavy goons without the steel path modifiers essentially these targets are above sortie free so i don't think an mr78 should be seeing higher than this what i will do however considering the brand new hydroid passive i'm gonna have to equip a different warframe because if not hydroid will simply skew the test results i only did this so i show you the fashion the whole pirate thing yes yes you guys love the pirate thing we're gonna be going with revenant and making sure that revenant doesn't have corrosive projection arcane tempo only applies to shotguns so this should be fine and kapow Shoot your targets, again, aim for the feed like we talked about earlier. Revenant normally gets knocked back unless, of course, you use Mesmer Skin. After you use Mesmer Skin, obviously, it's not going to be a concern anymore. So, using a Warframe that is immune to this kind of thing is definitely advantageous. As you can see, you get yourself procs on the target, you get yourself your Slash, and you get yourself your Vital. Keep in mind that the values of the Slashes, of the procs, will be dependent on what caused that Slash. Was it the big Bada Boom explosion, or was it one of the little bomblets? Take a look at that. And you can even hear the damage go off. Look at that. Beautiful, fantastic, very easily clearing what is high level targets for a standard introductory level setup. You saw I also picked up the ammo there, the ammo mutation doing a little bit of work. This is not exactly ideal for carpet bombing. This is more ideal to shoot like this, right? So you get that extra damage from the little bomblets. Look at that. Beautiful, fantastic. Tons of bleeds on your targets. You also got yourself. I would like to say sufficient vital procs, though it could be a bit more reliable. Let's just put it like that. This will conclude the new player portion of the guide. If you're not a new player, or if you're looking to upgrade your Zar, you just got past and you got yourself uh, galvanized mods, prime mods, all of that good things. You even got a Riven. Let's talk about Rivens really quick. This position is set to only 1 out of 5. That does not mean you cannot get a worthwhile Riven. It just means it's going to be very difficult to get the right roll. Multi shock, critical damage, harmless, negative, something like that. Yes? And it also means that it's going to be very expensive because despite its low Riven disposition, Riven traders still charge a whole lot for these Rivens because they are desirable. In my opinion, the Kuvazar does not need a Riven. You will see it can perform no problem, even in the high levels. You're looking at mm, something like this. You got yourself your Galvanized Chamber. You're not going to be using Galvanized Aptitude unless you want to exclusively use it in its barrage form. Yes? Galvanized Aptitude's damage benefit will not be applying to explosions, which is why we're not using it on this build. We also got Prime Firestorm, we got Prime Cryo Rounds, making Vital on the weapon. We also got Prime Bane of the something. I don't like these blasted mods, but on the Zar, considering the mods that help you get the most out of the weapon, you should look towards a faction modifier. Sadly, we're going to be using Bane of the Corrupted because we are 
including the Corrupted. We also got Ammo Gum Serration. You can go for the normal one if you want to. It doesn't really matter all that much. That 10%, it's not going to make a difference. But I do enjoy the 25% extra sprint speed. This is your option. And Primary Merciless. Here's an option for the build. What you can do is go for a Cold Czar. Forget about Prime Cryo Rounds. Get Vital from an outside source. Something like a Panzer Vulpophila or a Secondary Primer. Or Hydroid's One Ability or Grendel's Nourish. And then swap out Merciless because we got plenty of flat damage between the two sources right now on the weapon anyway. And go for Primary Frostbite. This, however, is the standard high level approach. Prime Rifle Amulet Mutation actually makes a pretty big difference in the usability of the weapon. So if you're a Kuvazar fan, you gotta get yourself this one. You're gonna be able to spam a bit more. We're not going to be shooting the exact same targets, we're going to pump up the level to 165 because it's more appropriate and we're also going to be enabling the Steel Path modifiers. Keep in mind that this being a galvanized setup, we're going to have to get a couple of kills, yes? But even so, I mean, the weapon breaks house. We also got, what is that, 5 stacks and 5 stacks? Look at that. Beautiful, fantastic, and these are some heavy duty targets. A single shot from the Zarna will be one shotting the targets that we were playing around earlier, but for these guys, that's a shot. Let's see what we get out of it. Plenty, plenty, plenty. One shot, baby. One shot galore. Out of the what was it? Eight targets here? Seven were absolutely annihilated from a single shot out of the Zar. What's my problem right now? Ammo, ammo friends, that's my usual problem. However, in actual missions when you get a decent density or a good density, something like a survival, that ammo with the prime uh, rifle mutation will no longer be a concern. So let's head on over to the path of steel. All systems shut down. Here we go. Welcome to the void, my friend. Steel path against the corrupted. We're gonna destroy absolutely everything. And I'm gonna try not to be super conservative about my ammo. Because I know a lot of you guys' main concern is, dude, how's the ammo? Tell me about the ammo. Can I still spam like I used to? Frick no, you can't spam like you used to. But as you can see, you can still spam good enough. Level 120, corrupted, steel path. So essentially these are not some pushover targets, though granted only the corrupted heavy goons are harder to kill when it comes to targets such as this. And this is how I play. Reminiscent of old school Zar, yes. And my ammo is still okay-ish. Look at that, a single shot absolutely annihilating whatever stands before you. But I should be telling you about my Warframe buffs. I am using Arcane Avenger right now on Revenant and my little Sentinel also has the Vigilante mod so I get extra crit, yes, fantastic. Outside of that, well, nothing. Really nothing. Now, of course, you might be curious. Hold on. Shouldn't I be using Carrier with Ammo Case considering the severe ammo issues that the Zar has? Well, if you had a look at my Brahma guide, I went into detail how Ammo Case actually overrides your Exilus slot in terms of ammo regeneration mods. As for the Kuba Zar and its performance, I don't know, guys. I mean, I'm still spamming quite nicely. I have no issue whatsoever. I'm killing everything that stands before me. Obviously, killing these targets doesn't really prove much of anything, but we're also going to be shooting an Acolyte. What I want to showcase on the Acolyte is both the Cannon Mode and the Barrage Mode, because theoretically, you should be going for the Barrage Mode. Then again, the Cannon Mode will be easier simply to use, because let's say you're in my situation right now, okay? You are doing, what is this, a survival, enemy density high, he's going to hide in the pack of enemies. Forget about it! Forget about it, just shoot the entire pack where the Acolyte is and watch everything die. Flash, flash, we got an Acolyte, and for the record, this is what Barrage can do, yes. They're gonna be able to one-shot these targets without much issue. Punch would be really good on this. Come on, where's the Acolyte? You see, you got a group of people here. So you saw a couple of Barrages in their targets. Where was it? Is it here? Here's another Barrage. One more Barrage, please. There you go, that was a, like, direct contact Barrage. That's it. We're gonna test one more Acolyte. There we go, finally a flash. And we're just gonna bomb this guy to the face, okay? No more fancy tricks, no more changing to any fire mode. We're just gonna bomb this guy to the face and that's it. See how that one works. Spawn, puppy. There it is. There it is. That's better. There you go. Just use that. The simple as. And speaking about simple as, that kind of wraps up the guide for the Kuvazar. Time to draw some conclusions. Is the Kuvazar irrelevant now? Absolutely not. It's still a fantastic area of effect weapon in Warframe, and you can blow up your targets quite easily. It's quite fun and enjoyable, as you can see. 
Careful how much you spam, however. While you still can spam to your heart's content, you can't just mindlessly do it anymore. Make sure you have prime rifle ammunition in the excellent slot. Careful about using ammo case because, again, that overrides that for some reason. Outside of that, if you enjoy this kind of gameplay style, you should also check out my Kuva Brahma guide. It's absolutely fantastic. Link in the cards right about now. Now, of course, some of you might want to know. Dude, I just want to know which are the best, the top weapons in the game right now. Got something like that? Of course I do. Top 10 weapons in Warframe coming up. Look at the cards right now. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. As always, one of my the laser. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to enable the notification bell thingy. Bye.